let's review one of my favorite movies ever. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. A family of chimpanzee are just chilling walking through their rainforest. You can sense something is wrong. Then out come a bunch of crazy hunters trying to catch them and they flee. Oh no, how terrifying. One of the females gets caught in a trap. She is shipped off and brought to a lab where experiments are done on her for intelligence. Will, our main character, is the lead scientist and he gets excited about this. So he runs to tell his boss who is responsible for making all the money that the ape is really, really smart. Jacob asks Will if he's sure that he's not rushing this. Will says one is all we need. The date is clear, let's go. They meet with the investors and say Bright Eyes, the female that's been exhibiting very intelligent behavior, is this way because of their 112 drug or virus thing. And because Will's father has Alzheimer's, he has a determination and motivation to make this work. Investors are pleased, but there's trouble in paradise as this guy starts to open the door. But Bright Eyes, the chimp that they're supposed to be showing the investors, is freaking out and trying to hold the door closed. Franklin's like, what's going on, bro? Get out of here, stalker. Franklin tries to coax her out, but it all goes wrong. She freaks out when she sees the trank gun and runs away. Needless to say, the investment meeting is a huge disaster, and one of the security guards is forced to put her down. The boss guy's like, this is a disaster, shut it all down, waste all of the apes, even though, you know, it was only one that did this, but it's probably contaminated. With what? I'm not really sure. The boss is like, you're lucky I don't fire you, Will. When Will comes back, Franklin has already had to put down all the other apes, except for one. A baby. Bright Eyes' baby. Which was the reason why she was acting the way she was acting. She had just given birth and was trying to protect her infant. Franklin can't keep him, so Will takes the ape home. Where his ailing father suffering from Alzheimer's forms a bond with him. Will takes care of the baby, and the father names the baby chimpanzee Caesar. They're astonished at how smart he is. And Will learns that Caesar has the intelligence gene passed down from his mother who was given the 112 virus for cognition. The green specks in his eyes are indicative of this. Three years later, Caesar is even smarter. And while there's a voiceover saying how smart he is, all you really see him doing are things that normal chimps do. When Will's confused father attacks his nurse, the nurse quits saying the father needs a home. Feeling desperate, Will takes the ALZ-112 virus home. He administers it to his father. I mean, there's nothing left to lose after this. The next day, his father is playing piano again and remembers not just his songs, but he's playing better than ever. While Will is very happy and enjoying this, Caesar sees the kids outside. Having seen a window of opportunity left open, literally, Caesar goes into the garage of the neighbor across the street so he can try their new bike. The little girl is spooked. She calls out for her father who comes with a bat. Caesar gets hurt, but the father tries to move him back over the fence. Will says, it's okay, it won't happen again. He's not dangerous. Caesar's scared, but not only that, his leg needs stitches. So Will takes him, wrapped up in a stroller, to the zoo, where he meets a veterinarian. The vet lady spits some facts after Caesar hooks them up together and invites her to come over for dinner that chimps can grow up to be dangerous. Caesar needs a place open to run so that he won't feel repressed. So they take him to the Redwoods, across the bridge to the Mirror Woods National Monument, where there are trails and facts about this redwood forest with these very, very tall trees. Will is nervous that Caesar will get lost, but his father says it's fine and he unclips his leash. Caesar holds out his hand to ask for permission. Oh, so Will gives it to him. Caesar regularly comes out to this forest as he grows older. Five years go by and Caesar is starting to feel restless. He's very close with Will who he sees as his father. As they are heading back home or to their car through the trail, Caesar sees a dog. Is that a chimpanzee? Hi. Caesar's like, what the hell is that? The dog is on a leash. Wait a minute, I'm on a leash too. Caesar has an attitude and asks his dad if he's a pet. Will tells Caesar the truth about where he works and what happened to his mother. Will keeps Caesar because he thinks this is his home. Caesar notices his grandfather, Will's dad, regressing. Unfortunately, the medications that Will's been giving his father are starting to wear off or not be as effective. He'd been giving his father these meds for five years and they're now starting to be ineffective. When his dad's illness comes back with a vengeance, confused, he gets into the next door neighbor's Mustang. The neighbor is livid and sick and fed up. To protect his grandfather from this angry neighbor, Caesar attacks the neighbor. He chases him and ends up biting the finger the guy was using to jab his grandfather with. Everyone sees this and they're afraid. The grandfather consoles Caesar 
Caesar telling him it's not his fault and it's okay. He knows he didn't mean it. There's a court order to take Caesar away. He is brought to a shelter for primates. They trick Caesar to go in where he thinks he's going to get a place to play. The most heartbreaking part is when Caesar realizes that he's locked in there. Will tells him it's going to be okay. Understandably, Caesar is scared and feels lost and betrayed. Imagine your family taking you to a place like this and then locking you in a place with some strangers and telling you it's going to be okay as they leave and they weren't even honest about where they were taking you. Will is going to have to sign Caesar over to this guy. God, seeing Caesar's face, I just can't. Look how hurt he looks. Oh my god. Caesar meets the sadistic zookeeper dude who locks him in and mistreats the apes. <laughs> Will does everything in his power to try and get Caesar back while trying to find a better cure for his dad. He asks his boss for a second chance and he confesses that he tried it on his dad, knowing that it works and they just need a more vicious way of overcoming the body's antibodies so that it's not used to the virus. The boss wants him to start testing it on some new chimps immediately. Meanwhile, Caesar is mistreated where he is. He misses home. Anyway, they start the testing on a lab eight named Koba. <laughs> This time they test it by administering the virus through an aerosol solution. But Koba has a reaction and snaps one of his straps. And as a result, Franklin's mask gets slapped off his face. This is a virus that they're testing, but is very important for the humans to not be infected. They continue working on Koba, who later shows signs of intelligence. The boss money guy sees his name written as like, oh yeah, money, 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 bro. Franklin, who got his mask knocked off, is exhibiting signs of sickness, but he says he's fine. Check out exhibit B when you have the chance. Every bad decision in this movie that the freaking characters made, like Franklin coughing up blood and not telling anyone this. In the facility, Caesar feels very sad, but he makes a friend with Maurice, the orangutan. Caesar is relieved because Morris also knows sign language, due to him having been a circus orangutan. It turns out, based on what Caesar can see, that some of the chimps from this so-called shelter are shipping some of the individuals being held here to Genesis, the lab company, where Will works and where they're experimenting on chimpanzees. Will still comes to visit, gets angry when he sees the taser on this guy's hip, knowing somehow that this guy abuses his chimp. Once again, Will has to tell Caesar that Caesar can't come home yet and Will is still trying. This almost breaks Caesar. You have to trust me. Caesar, you have to trust me. Caesar's angry, and he starts planning to set himself free. When the evil zookeeper had brought his friends to come show off the chimps, Caesar managed to pickpocket the guy and get his knife. He uses it to open his cage. He opens Buck, the gorilla's cage, too. There's indication that Buck has never been outside before. Caesar also wakes up and frees the dominant ape who had been bullying him on the field. After getting some sweet revenge and seeing that he's outmatched because Caesar has a freaking gorilla as a friend, this guy has no choice but to ask for forgiveness. <laughs> father refuses to take any more of the meds and he passes away in the morning. The next day Will finds out that the boss had okayed trials for the next iteration of the virus. Will says that they're not ready. They still don't know how it affects humans. But the boss dude says it's happening with or without him. And that's unfortunate because Franklin's very sick. He goes to Will's house, but Will's not home. When the neighbor's like, what are you doing, buddy? Franklin coughs in his face because people, I guess, don't know how to cover their mouths when they're coughing or sneezing. And now this guy's infected. It's funny how a zombie apocalypse, or the precursor to a zombie apocalypse, and an ape uprising are happening all at once in the show. Will bribes the primate shelter dude to allow him to get Caesar. But Caesar's like, screw you, man. This is my home now. I'm Theon Greyjoy. Caesar sees the leash and he's like, oh, hell no. I'm more free here than I ever was with you. And feeling angry with his dad, he shuts the door in the most disrespectful manner ever. And I can't say I blame him, but all the apes respect him for this. He basically teaches the apes that they have to stick together, that they're stronger together. After Caesar escapes, he goes straight to his home, knowing that Will has the research vials there. He brings them back to the primate shelter and administers them to the rest of the chimps. He checks all their eyes to see if it's green, which is indicative of them being intelligent. Franklin's landlady finds him dead in his apartment. Meanwhile, at the shelter, Caesar makes a stand. No! Sadistic zookeeper dude is electrified when he tries to taser the chimps while they're spraying water at him. So smart. The apes are free from the facility while Will 
tracks down Caesar. People are made aware of this as they stampede through the suburbs. They head to the research facility and they free all the apes there, including Koba. The boss guy Jacobs is saying, we need to end all of the apes. The apes free the ones from the zoo. They're basically all rising up. Caesar leading them. Caesar is taking them to that redwood forest that he always used to go to as a kid and where he basically grew up. Will is trying to save Caesar's life and trying to stop everyone from shooting them. The apes, I mean. Caesar's got this. He's quite the tactician and tells the orangutans to go under the bridge since they're good at swinging with their long arms while some of the chimps go above. The gorillas make a distraction by pushing a bus and using it as a shield against the bullets while Caesar charges in on a running horse and tells the others to come down. Policemen are ambushed by the chimps from above and from the orangutans below. Caesar tries to stop the helicopter machine gun guy who's already killed a few of the apes. Knowing that Caesar is important for their freedom, Buck the gorilla moves Caesar out of the way and takes the bullets. He heroically saves Caesar by bringing down the helicopter while also dying in the process. <laughs> Jacobs is responsible for all of this, Caesar doesn't kill him. Instead, he lets Koba do the job. Koba pushes the helicopter over into the ocean, killing Jacobs. Will gets in an abandoned police car and gives chase after Caesar. They are all now in the Redwoods Forest. Koba attacks Will. Before he can do anything, Caesar jumps in and saves him because Will's his father and he's not allowed to be touched. Koba was trying to step up, but Caesar reminds him real fast who's in charge. Caesar helps up Will. Will tells him that he can come home. Sure he can. After everyone is on high alert for any primate other than human. After most of these primates also hurt a whole bunch of people and kill some of them. They essentially go back to being a prisoner. So Caesar gives the best response and the most touching response ever. I was gonna kiss him. <laughs> Every time that gets me. Caesar is home. Holy shit, 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 shit. All these apes are now depending on Caesar. He's all grown up. They start anew, and Will watches Caesar and his friends climb to the top of the redwoods, ready to start their new life in the forest of uh, California. The end. What a touching, touching story. So many stupid characters in this movie. But man, it was one of my favorites and I hadn't watched it in a long time and I'm glad I was able to sit down and watch it again. Definitely one of the best trilogies I've seen. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.